Hello, this is me. I'm gonna make another dope couch. I know you wanna see. I have been obsessing over Sarah Hannison huggy chair, and I know that you have too because I get this in my DMs like once a week. I have to say that the designer is not so famous, it's literally the design. This chair has been going viral all over Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. She's pretty famous for calm, relaxing colors and we're gonna make it in a neon yellow, but that's just details. Sorry, I forgot. My name is Nicole, I'm an Italian interior designer in Tel Aviv and I love to remake super, super, super high design for super, super tiny budgets. Let's go. Take out some foam. There are several ways to create volume on a couch. In this one, because I wanted the puffiness to be both on the front, on the back, and on the top, I decided to not make any wood structure at all, only the base, and make all the volume made with foam itself. So we're gonna have to cut this. How high is a chair? It's 43 centimeters, but we have to consider that the foam eats a lot of the height itself when you sit on it so I would say that if you want it perfectly to chill on it and also to put on your desk like I do I would do 53 50 let's cut it five times first coffee we're gonna start by doing a mark at 66 centimeters and a half because this is two meters using this measurements you're gonna be able to do three volumes with only one foam. Two meters divided by three, it's 66 point something. That's why this is the measurements that I'm doing. And now the depth that is gonna be a. Even though it might look that the chair is a circle, it is not. It is way more voluminous on the right and left conform to the depth, and that is why we can do two different measurements. This is the one that we do 80, we mark top and bottom, and then we draw a line. To find the middle of this eating, eating this sitting area, what we're gonna do is simply draw an X on the middle of the square, rectangle actually. Put your elbow in the middle and use it as a pern to create a circular effect. And there you go. Same thing on the other side. I have been doing every single couch of this channel with a precision knife and that's it, but so many comments just say to buy a foam cutter and I did buy that to make it as an experiment faster, easier, more precise, I don't know. And I'm gonna use it for the first time but don't forget that you can totally use this. You do not need fancy equipment. That's extremely cheap but this is cheaper. All this ones with a simple precision knife. Little unboxing situation and I was literally figuring it out while I was opening this. Are you ready? It's literally smoking. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna try cutting here. Ah! This is so cool! <coughs> I've never seen something so precise! Look at this. So, cutting with this piece of equipment makes it extremely smooth. Yes, the cuts are perfect, but the heat doesn't last because after that you put it inside, the heat goes away, so you have to let it heat up again and then use again. And also, so much smoke, I was coughing all the time. So because I'm determined to stinginess, I decided to try again to use also the precision knife. And I'm gonna show you the second side using a precision knife, and then you guys can judge on your own which is the better thing to do. At the end, I decided to test both options, and look at this. This is the part made with the foam cutter, and yes, it is a little bit more straight to be honest, but it takes a lot of time because every time that the cutter goes inside, it loses the heat, so you have to let it heat up again and then go for it, and it also makes so much smoke that, yeah. This is the precision knife that with no doubt it is a little bit less straight. I'll find you a corner, here. You can see that I didn't go so straight, and that's really not so much of a difference. Talking about measurements, for all the rest of the volume, we don't have to measure nothing. We just place the drawing that we already did on top of it, then mark it with a marker and cut it away. It's very easy. What I did at the end was for a volume of 10 and one of the volume of five. That's a total of 45, and the missing five is gonna be the leg. Magic! Interrupting the episode to give a huge shout out to my patron subscribers and that is Shalom, it's Asia, it's my mom, it's Kismis, it's Zari, it's Layla, and the new that joined just a few days ago, the wolf girl. Thank you. Comfort testing. And it's awesome. Okay, okay, we're getting there and the shape is basically done. It does not matter how much effort you're gonna put, precision knife, 
foam cutter, it doesn't matter. When you put them one on top of the other, they're not gonna be perfect, but that doesn't matter. Let's stick them together and then we go and make it more precise. I'll show you. Come with me. See, it's pretty, pretty great, but still not perfect. There's a little bit of a step. We can fix it later. Try to glue all these foams together. And the technique is the following. You just spray on one side and on the other side, and then let it dry for a few seconds, like 20 seconds, put one on top of the other, be sure that you put them perfectly, and then do the same thing again. Wait 20 seconds, put it on top, put it perfectly, do it again. Wait for it, put it again, put it perfectly, wait it again. Basically, all the way to the top. Now that they're all stuck together, it's gonna be extremely easy to go and cut out the details that were not perfectly matching. So. Trim it up because I am a professional. Not at all. I decided to add in between the final fabric and the foam itself some spongy material to make this even more seamless. You're gonna end up with something that looks basically like a sushi wrap and then we're gonna now spray it with the glue so to keep it all together. Also the top. Open the wrapping that you had just done and now you just spray it with the glue again and put it all over it for the second time. This moment is important that you don't have, to have too much extras on the bottom. That's why I'm wrapping it on the bottom. Cut away the extras and then the top. Don't worry, we're gonna cover it with a second layer. That is basically the same shape. Put on the top, squash it as nicely as possible. And guys, you are done with your entire seating area. Step three is to create the back pillow of the couch, but obviously creating the circle with the foam was not an option, so I bought three of these. We're gonna sew them together and stitch them on the back. I'm not ashamed of this, and you guys know this if you follow this channel for a while, there's nothing that I hate more than sewing, but sometimes you need to do it. So it wasn't possible to find a boa that was this long in a budget, and I just decided to buy three of them and stitch them together. It's a very easy process. It took me like 15 minutes, but yeah, it's not so precise because I'm not good at this. So even you guys can do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be hidden by the material. Don't worry about it at all. Time to place this huge snake on the top of the chair, and as you can see, it was already totally visible. The shape is basically perfect. Yeah, it doesn't stay. We need to stitch it. We'll do it later. Now, let's do the base. Because it's impossible to staple the material without having a solid base, you cannot staple on the foam itself. So what I did is cut one big shape of wood, very thin wood actually, on the bottom of the chair. And then as you can see, it's two circles because I did it a few centimeters skinnier so that you would not feel the wood with your feet if you ever bang on top of your chair with your feet. Then take out the fabric. Wrap around the meter around it to see how fat your chair is because I don't know how to do the mathematical formula for this. It came out to be 287 and that's the height and length that I did for the fabric. Make two little marks right and left, make a straight line, cut it all out, and we're ready for the sewing. Actually, no. First, we staple it. Uh, yeah. Also, for the top, we do the same thing. We put the wood on the bottom, make the same shape, cut out the borders, always, always, always add some extra centimeters. And now, as you can see, I'm basically stabbing the material inside the foam so that it would stay in shape while I go and place the two sides one on top of each other. Fold in half the big, long side of the material so that you know where is the middle of it so that when you go around it it's going to stay with the sewing on the back of the chair and not in weird positions start painting it all on top one side with the other both the top with the bottom and the two sides that finish once you have that we are gonna do a huge wrap with our boa yes you just wrap it around it go and staple not staple just spin it pin it with all your pins and make a little circular shape on the top that you're gonna pin exactly like you did with the top of your couch, but this is for the two sides of your boa, so that after you can sew that together. Take out everything from the material because now we're gonna have to pass it inside the sewing machine. It's basically just straight lines. It's not so hard, obviously it didn't come perfect to me, we all know that I'm not good at sewing, but it was 95, I would say 95% accurate and I'm pretty proud of this cut away the extra material, otherwise it's gonna make some ugly volume, and look at this, so nice. And our worst nightmare is over, and all the sewing is done. You flip it, flip it inside out. Oh, there's so much dust on my floor. But anyway, and then now, you put it on your cake. Time to dress this chair, dress this chair, dress this chair. Time to dress the chair and even all the boa. Put it inside, push it inside, pull it inside, wherever you can do. It's like a worm and it's gonna end up inside of it. Take this. Pretty.
good. Yeah. Now, before putting the boa, that is the back of the chair or the armrest on it, I think it's time to pull all the fabric down. What was that? Somebody died probably. I would say it's time to pull the fabric down, staple it on the bottom, and after that, put the back. First some glue because that never hurt nobody. Last spring of this tutorial and we just put it on the wood, wait a few seconds, put it on top and we can go and staple it. This is like my favorite part of every video. Staple, 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 always pull the fabric to make it as smooth as possible and continue for all the space. This is 100% not part of the original chair but I thought it would be so cool to just spin around the office on my chair. So instead of adding little gummy feet, I'm gonna add these tiny wheels. I know, that's gonna be so much fun. Place the wheels as you think it's gonna be more comfortable. I decided to put five because I was afraid that my fat butt was gonna break this thing. So I put also one in the middle and then screw it in and you're done. Oh my God. This is awesome. I'm telling you, this is awesome. I thought about it and I'm pretty sure I will be cancelled from any possible concept of correct designing technique of couches but I decided this is my solution and yes it's gonna make it washable and no not easily washable but at least it's washable you can de the staples to staple them again but I'm talking about the pillow this is the only way that I could think about to deattach the pillow and make it rounded without... Okay, basically, I'll show you. I'll show you my solution. Get a marker. We already added it on top of our couch and we're gonna draw where we don't see it after. We're not gonna see this. Little dot on the bottom. Little bot dot on the connection on the top. That basically is where the line is. And we're gonna do this 15 times marking all the spots on the top and off the bottom so that they could connect exactly where I wanted them. And then I'm taking out these little bottoms that I'm sewing on the pillow. Yes, we're gonna make the hook. Just to be clear, this is absolutely not 15 buttons as I expected, it's only seven, but miscalculations are not important. Seven, eight, that's more or less how many you're gonna need. Continue sewing and putting every single button on every single brown mark that you did. And now we're gonna create the hooks in which the button is gonna get stuck to yes you make a lot of little hooks and then sew them directly on the fabric of the bottom of the chair i have to tell you that i learned that the smallest the hook it is the better it is because it's elastic and it means that it's not gonna move around at all and the pillow is gonna be perfectly in shape go and put the hooks inside your button so that your pillow is stuck okay i was starving so i left the office last night and came back one day later but the chair is done and i can't wait to show it to you is it a chair or a couch? Anyway, it's gorgeous. You can see it on my back. You can see it on my back. Let's go see the reveal. But before that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Let's go see it on our